Dora II, also known as Wanag Sagard, better known by his birth name Lebna Dengel, was Neguso Nagast of Ethiopia, a member of the Solomonic dynasty. He was the son of Emperor Naod and Queen Naod Mogassa. The important victory over Adil leader Mifuz may have given Dora the title Wanag Sagard, which is a combination of GEZ and Harari terms. Early reign, although she was well into her 70s, the empress mother Eleni stepped in to act as her step-great-grandson's regent until 1516, when he came of age. During this time, she was aware that the neighboring Muslim states were benefiting from the assistance of other, larger Muslim countries like the Ottoman Empire. Eleni sought to neutralize this advantage by dispatching the Armenian Matthias to Portugal to ask for assistance. However, the Portuguese response did not arrive in Ethiopia until much later, when an embassy led by Dom Rodrigo de Lima arrived at Massawa on April 9, 1520. Transversing the Ethiopian highlands, they did not reach Dorit's camp until October 19 of that year. Francisco Alvarez provides us a description of the emperor. In age, complexion, and stature, he is a young man, not very black. His complexion might be chestnut or bay, not very dark in color, he is very much a man of breeding, of middling stature. They said that he was 23 years of age, and he looks like that. His face is round, the eyes large, the nose high in the middle, and his beard is beginning to grow. In presence and state he fully looks like the great lord that he is. Dorit had ambushed and killed Emir Mifuz of Adil in 1517. About the same time a Portuguese fleet attacked Sila, a Muslim stronghold, and burned it. In 1523, Dorit campaigned amongst the Guraj near Lakes Way. Contemporaries concluded that the Muslim threat to Ethiopia was finally over, so when the diplomatic mission from Portugal arrived at last, Dora denied that Matthias had the authority to negotiate treaties, ignoring Eleni's counsels. After a stay of six years, the Portuguese at last set sail and left a governing class who thought they were securely in control of the situation. As Paul B. Henza notes, they were mistaken. The Ethiopian Adil War, with the death of Sultan Abu Bakr in 1520, a young Imam Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi consolidated his hold on the Adil Sultanate making his candidate Umar bin Sultan, then began a campaign to extinguish the empire of Ethiopia. The imam crossed the Awash River and entered Fatagar in 1528, looting and burning the town of Badak before Doric could arrive with his army. The imam began to withdraw, retreating across the Samara, a tributary of the Awash. The imam's followers were accustomed to making lightning raids on Ethiopian territory. Swiftly attacking and quickly returning home, they had no experience in pitched battles, and Imam Ahmad Grant struggled with numerous desertions. The Emperor Dorat caught up with Imam Ahmad Grant's forces, and they engaged in battle on either March 7 or March 9, 1529 at Shibrakur, but failed to destroy the Imam's army. While not a clear victory for the Imam, this battle still proved to the Imam's followers that they could fight the Ethiopian army. Imam Ahmad Grant spent the next two years preoccupied beyond the Awash, but returned to attack Ethiopia in 1531, where he scattered the army under the general Eslamu by firing the first cannon in the Horn of Africa. Dorit was forced to withdraw into the Ethiopian highlands and fortify the passes into Betamhara, leaving the territories to the east and south under the protection of his general Wasan Sargad. However, Wasan Sargad was slain near Mount Busat while fighting Yuri Utman on 29 July and his army scattered. The Imam surprised the Emperor at the Battle of Ambassel on 27 October, where the Emperor was almost captured, a reversal, in the words of R.S. Whiteway, that left Lebna Dengel, never in a position to offer a pitched battle to his enemies. The Imam's followers poured into Bet Amhara, pillaging every church they found, including Mekane Selassie, Akran Zamayam, Deborah Nagwajwade and Ganar Georgius.
Emperor Dorit fell back behind the Abe River to the relative security of Gojam. Only their failure to capture the royal compound at Ambigeshan slowed the Muslims down. In the campaigns that followed, Ahmad's followers destroyed churches, monasteries, and converted Christians at the point of spear. In April 1533, Ahmad once again assembled his troops at Debra Burhan to conquer, or at least ravage, the northern regions of Tigris. Grey, Begemda, and Gojam. Both Ethiopia and Dorit suffered heavily from these assaults. The monastery of Deborah Libanus was burned, and the establishments on the islands of Lake Tana looted. Dorit's eldest son Victor was killed at Zara in Wag by a lieutenant of Ahmad on April 7, 1537. Another son, Menes, was captured on May 19, 1539 and later sent to Yemen. Ambergeshan fell to another assault in January, 1540. The royal prisoners interred there were slaughtered with their guards and the royal treasury looted. During the years that he lived as an outlaw in his own realm, Dorit came to see Queen Eleni's wisdom in reaching out to Europe for help and he dispatched Joao Bermudes, who had arrived in Ethiopia with Dom Rodrigo de Lima, to ask for it once again. However, this help in the form of Cristovaro da Gama and his picked troop of 400 did not reach Ethiopia until after Dorit was killed in battle near Debra de Mo, the 2nd of September 1540. The Ethiopian historian Tadessa Tamrit writes, the Muslim occupation of the Christian highlands under Ahmad Grant lasted for little more than ten years, between 1531 and 1543, but the amount of destruction brought about in these years can only be estimated in terms of centuries. One of Dorotai's younger sons, Jacob, is said to have stayed behind to hide in the province of Menz in Shewa. Yaakov's grandson Susanius I defeated his various second cousins in 1604 to become emperor and started the Gondoline of the Solomonic dynasty.